name Yvette Fielding and this time I brought my team back to a location we're very familiar with. The reason being is the owners have invited us to investigate a very haunted and very empty Rithing Castle. The first documented fortification on this site was created for King Edward I of England in 1277. It was a strategic stronghold in the eventual defeat of the Welsh by the English in 1282. Soon after, the de Grey family took over the castle and remained until 1508. The castle saw many a conflict and survived many a monarch. During the Civil War, the fortification was attacked by both the Parliamentarians and then the Royalists, depending on who occupied the castle at any given time. Although the castle has many ghost stories and strange paranormal occurrences, the most famous being that of the Grey Lady. It is said she was the wife of the second in command at the castle. She discovered that her powerful husband was having an affair with a local woman and in a jealous rage she murdered her husband's lover with an axe. She was tried, found guilty and executed. But as she was refused burial inside the castle, her ghost is said to walk the building, terrorising anyone in her path. We've been given unprecedented access into the whole of this amazing building and of course that means coming upstairs into these derelict areas. Now lots of people have witnessed the sounds of children crying and running around, sometimes playing, and when people are asleep downstairs, they hear footsteps above them as if somebody is in this very room, but when they come up, there's nobody here. When this castle used to be a hospital, this part of the building, the basement, was where they would house the bodies, the mortuary. Lots of people have witnessed the awful sounds of crying and moaning as if people were in desperate pain and need. Could those sounds belong to the long lost dead? Paranormal activity occurs regularly in this building, no more so than in here, the banqueting room. The ghost of the White Lady has been seen in here on several occasions and lots of dark shadows have been seen flittering around the walls. This table has even been known to come right off the floor. With so much paranormal activity, hopefully we'll encounter some tonight. Rithin Castle. We're no stranger to this place. We've been uh, to investigate it before with Most Haunted and with Most Haunted Experience. We've come here many, many times and each time we've come here, we've come away with something paranormal, something strange has happened. So how are you feeling about being back here tonight? And we're completely on our own. I know, that's the exciting bit. There's absolutely no disturbance from any guests anywhere or any staff in the building for that matter, so that's going to make it a little bit more tasty as far as I'm concerned because the only people who are totally here are just us chickens. And the fact that we've been here so many times as well, we've got a lot of other experiences to draw on uh, and notes to compare from, from previous visits as well. You could even jokingly say it's one of, become one of our favourite haunts uh, ultimately. But I'd be quite interested to know if anything goes off the scale tonight. There's, there's only a small group of us, uh, the place is so quiet and I'd love to know if the paranormal activity that we've experienced before is generated from human energy, and there's been a lack of human energy in this building for quite some time, is that gonna have a detrimental effect on any experiences we have this evening? That's a really good point, because a lot of the experiences that the public have are obviously when they're in their beds at night. I've seen footage of um, a couple that were staying in one of the bedrooms. The lamp, the side lamps actually moved on their own mm -hmm. so um, you know and the door something will knock on the door and they'll open it there's nobody there people have seen the ghost of the white lady um, so a lot of activity happens in the corridors and in the bedrooms so for me you're absolutely right those bedrooms haven't been touched for a long time no one slept in them so for me I would like to spend a little bit of time individually each of us 
sort of split up in perhaps some of the haunted rooms and Brilliant. see if anything anything happens at all. Last of the thing, we, we haven't had any cameras whilst the place has been lying vacant to, to document any activity. I mean, don't get me wrong, we've had uh, locations where we have shot activity, Accrington comes to mind, uh, where no one's been in the building and we've had cell doors opening and closing by themselves, but what's been the energy that's made that happen, we, we don't really know. We can't quantify it in any way, shape or form. So if we do uh, capture anything tonight as well with us being here, then that'd be quite exciting. Now, lots of people have been asking um, me on social media and when I meet them as well, they'll say, surely Glenn by now has made up his mind. He must know with all the proof that there is life after death and that ghosts do exist. So what do you say about uh, that? You know, What's your answer for that? But also being here at Rithin, um, and the fact that, you know, so many people, like I said, guests have experienced phenomena and the same kind of phenomena over and over and over again. 90% of the time with activity, there's usually a genuine explanation for it. And if there isn't, there's usually a case where you could say there's a genuine explanation for it. You know, if we were to get uh, something fall over down the stairs, we can't see where it's come from, but who's to know that there isn't just been a draft in the building that's done that? That's what I mean. You, there, there is usually an explanation that you could, you could say that's what it was, even if it was genuinely paranormal. And that said, I do concede, and I have done time and time again, when I've witnessed and experienced something which can't be explained away so readily, but it still doesn't tell me what the cause was. As I said just before, you cannot quantify or, you know the experience you can't you can't measure it we don't know what it's made up of we don't know how it's manifesting in any way we don't know the reason for it is it being caused by somebody who is dead don't get me wrong I do want it to be mm -hmm. something that's uh, a spirit from uh, a, a, who's been alive in a previous life that would be great that would answer so many people's questions and uh, put everybody's minds at rest at what happens to us after death. But for now, all I know is activity is genuine when it happens and you can't explain it away. I've exper experienced enough of it. But we don't know how it's doing it. A lot of it defies science and physics, There's, hence the name paranormal. None of it makes sense. So just to be able to say, oh, it's being caused by a dead person, well, that's just a scapegoat as far as I'm concerned. Something else I want to touch on, which is um, psychic phenomena. So, for instance, I found in the last six months to a year that when I go into a, a location, I will close my eyes and I will let images or words, or sometimes I'll hear a voice, come into my mind. And at first I was very embarrassed about it. And I thought, oh, do I say something or not? And it was Carl that said, you know, no, just say it. And I, I am starting to do that now. And it, it, it made me think that actually we all have the capacity and the capability of, of opening up and listening to those voices or those messages that we see. And don't just brush them off as, oh, it's my imagination, because, you know, six times out of 10, it might not be. Um, and so I, I, I'm finding it very interesting. Doug, I've worked with many, many psychics and mediums mm. and nine times out of 10, a lot of them, you know, for me, I found um, weren't, um, they thought they were genuine, but later on we found out that, that they weren't. There's only one medium that I've ever worked with that's been absolutely, to me, Blow you away. blown me away and actually brought me to tears. So for me, it's a very touchy subject, but I think, and I think that's why I'm a bit embarrassed about opening up a little bit, mm. but I think we all have the capability to be able to do it. And I would like maybe the team to sort of encourage them to say, if you do get an image or something in your head, say it out loud. And then perhaps for you to say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, like we do do, we're gonna see if we can check this out historically and get it verified. Okay. Because then there's something going on, isn't there? Well, there is. I mean, we do have a disadvantage in that respect that we've come to a familiar location. Of course, yeah. Uh, so we will have preconceived ideas. Mm. But that said, if, you, if you're going into a room and, and I'll do this myself, you know, as well, because when in Rome, do as the Romans Absolutely, do. Absolutely, yeah. Throw yourself into the experiment. You know, let's say what comes into our minds, and then if any of it becomes verified, is that a coincidence? Was that something paranormal going on? Uh, or, or was it um, something that is just, you know, easily explainable? I'd be more interested to hear what Greg and Darren have to say about that kind of experiments because ultimately they've been to uh, Rithian Castle less often than ourselves. I mean, Carl and Stuart 
Carl produces his programme, he has a good idea about the history of all the locations that we go to, so he's already got prejudiced ideas of uh, what happens in each of these rooms anyway. Plus there's the weekend events with Most Haunted Experience, Carl and Stuart even do stayovers with, with the guests as well. We've been here ourselves so often, so if we walk into a room and we want to say what's on our mind, with less of a preconceived idea than the rest of us, I'd be very keen to hear what Greg and Darren experience anything that uh, comes to mind that turns out to be totally bona fide um, information and data which has previously been unexplored, as well as myself. It's going to be very interesting. Also, I, like I say later on, who's going to share a bed with Stuart? <laughs> it won't be me. <laughs> he farts. <laughs>
Hello? I've got in my head. I've got in my, shall I say what I've got in my head? Go for it. Why are you here? Well, we're here because we want to communicate with you. We're here because we respect you. We're here because we want to try and understand you. Can I say what? I, I'm not no, psychic think, at all. Not, I think it's really important uh, okay, to put yourself in the mind. He put me down here. I had a nightmare hellish time. I have not a clue what that means. How does that come to you? It just, it just, it's just words just come into my head. What's, it feels something on you. Is, there a, is that the way out there, Carl? Is yeah. that the stairs yeah. up there? Yeah. It's I like can't. something just went... Well, that's what uh, Darren felt. Yeah. Yeah. Is, there, is there anything supposed to happen down here? I don't know. We need to find out. It's so, a long so, time. What, it's a long time since we did this location, isn't it? So well, I can't yeah. remember. Well, I've heard the trouble is with this bit, there's so many different stories about some people say it was the mortuary and there's lots of bodies. Some people say people were incarcerated down here. I don't think they were incarcerated, to be honest, but who's to say? That was definitely something blowing in my ear. There's no drafts down here. There's not, is there? Hello? There was definitely a draft where we were. Yeah, there was. And we're further. We were further into yeah, the cellar, yeah. away from all sort of sources of yeah. wind. What well, you're talking? An outside just, draft just coming in. I'm generally just feeling cold. cold yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel cold generally, but that was a proper. Yeah. Right. Really? Here. Oh, yeah. I hate it when they do that. It was happening when yeah. we were talking about the. The lady. Oh, it's a lady. Hmm. Um, and I get the name McGee. I don't know if that's any relevance whatsoever, but in, we might check it, check it out and see. Does it, is it surprising that stuff's coming to you? Because you don't normally. No, I don't. Really. But I, it's, I, any of us can do this. Anybody you can talk at all. If mm. you just close your eyes and be, and be quiet and just and we ignore them, don't we, Carl? And just the, oh, it's just too many people ignore it. Ignore it, it. and and we can all all mm. of us do it. But now and again, I sort of when I come into it, like I just close my eyes and see what happens, and I just have to just. Go with it. It might be a load of rubbish, or it might, you know. It's the one thing coming to place like this, as we always say, you know, when we're with guests doing this, that oh, just say what's on your yeah. mind when you first, because mm. yeah, it might be absolute, have no relevance whatsoever, but there might be something you're getting. Yeah, you know, it's a gut feeling. Don't forget, we all have instinct. Yeah. Really, you know, it's a thing of you know, dogs know when they're going to the vet. They know when something bad's going to happen. And I think we had those instincts years, you. Know, yeah. Way back, but we've lost them because we've got yeah, migration okay. and disbelief and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I, and I think it's worth. That's why I always say to you that just whatever comes into your mind, just say it. And I, I'm trying to do it more myself. Yeah, because I just think. And st st we should all do it, all of us. Just go with go with what's in it, and anybody you know at home watching. Yeah. Don't think you're going around the bend. You're probably not. <laughs> I'm actually going. You are going around the bend. Come on, make a noise. Oh God, it's very dark in there, isn't it? Yeah, it's really dark. Come on, move something. Do you have a torch about? Yeah, I yeah. do. Come on, move something. Throw something. Affect one of us. That's me. I've just banged into something. Come on, please. Come on, then. Let's do it. Come on. We're only here for a few minutes. Make a noise. Can you copy me? Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard a noise behind me. Behind you. Yeah, I was just going to say to you, Greg, I was going to say, was that you shuffling around? I wasn't moving. I no, I was close to this table. I wasn't touching it. I get what the feeling like something well. rustling like or shuffling. Like yeah. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. ah. See, I get the feeling that that we've come in and then some somebody has come in now and gone right. What's going on here with these people? I'm gonna look bit of a bit of a, a look. Hopefully, they may recognise us from last time. Well, yeah. And go. Shit! It's not those buggers mm. again. Yeah, but do you know what the, the difference is now? Is is that the, the castle has gone. And just, it's going through sorry, such a sorry, Carl, just one minute. Greg, just move. No, no, no. No, turn yourself here and just move your body left and right. You right, I just saw something. Yeah, but I thought it was. But I saw something drop oh. from the ceiling 
down to the floor. What, like, like a light? A, like a, no, like a dark, sort of rectangle, but like an overly sort of there, and it just sort of fell. It went like that and went Oh, okay. Floor, which is why I just wanted to make sure it wasn't your... Shadow. Well, yeah. Just just for people watching, um, Greg's looking at the view, the, the screen on the camera, which shines a light on his face, which casts a shadow on the wall behind him. But we've just, I've, I've just sort of checked that out, and it wasn't that. Oh, now you've put that on there. Look at this. Let's stand on here, see if we can get some tapping. Wood. Well, wood is good. Yeah, wood is good. <laughs> like it, we like that. Wood is good. <laughs> Hello, is there anybody here? If there is somebody here, please can you tap? Tap on this wood. Can you can you make a noise like this, please? Come on. Come on, make a noise. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on. Come and tap or knock so we can talk to you. Copy me. Come on. I can hear it. Come on, come on, come on. Come closer. Grumbling city. Yeah. It's, it's like if you I, I did hear something. Yeah, yeah. A few seconds ago yeah. on there. Come on, come closer. Come and talk to us. We want to find out who's here. I know you're here. We can sense you. Two for yes, one for no. Like this. Come on. Did you hear a whistle then? I did. Yes, yes, I did. Is that a bird or...? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was in the room or... Oh, is, is it? Is it far away? Can I just move my, f yeah. my weight? Is that it? No. I know you tummy rumbled as well, but that wasn't it either. Yeah, I can see you shifting from side to side, Carl, but that's not you. Well, it made a rumbly, rumbly. It sounded to me as if it came near the, the chair, like... What, a rumble? No, look, the tap, the little tiny oh, yeah. tap that was before it. Just so you know, Carl, you've got some chairs, one behind you, and there's some to the side of you as well. Great. That's it. Now, You've this got is it. fascinating. Mm -hmm. Do you remember we did a, an investigation recently? Mm -hmm. Do you hear that? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So recently, I, I just gave you a weird look, and you weren't seeing it because it was in the dark. It's only because when we stopped, we, like Stuart mentioned this, so I when we stopped sort of trying to do stuff, there was the rumbling sound, and none of us had moved. Yeah. But what fascinates me is. Right, Greg. Let's tap it, tap it. Hello. That was really precise. That was yeah. doof, doof. Yeah. Hello. One. I'm going to get Greg. I'm just going to get feet. Okay. So you can have the wife. Yep. Hello. Can, can you give us two loud knocks, please? Oh, yeah, holy. that's great. That's echoey. that's echoey. It's brilliant. Thank you so very much. That just, that's just giving me like shivers, me like too. right from my feet yeah. up, to, up to my head. Yeah. I think you're excited. You're talking to us, aren't you? Can you just tell, knock out how many of you are here with us now? Calendar, but I completely stood. I got nine. Yeah, eight or nine. Something. Oh, what? This is, this is amazing. I've got you. I've got Yvette and Carl's feet in shot, and there's no movement whatsoever. Just, just, pan, just pan across the mine, Stu, will you? I'm, yep. I'm on, I'm on concrete. You're on concrete. I've got that shot. And where's I Greg? Can't, I, I can't. Where's I can't Greg? Let me just tap right. him. It's a different sound. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But you're not moving your feet, are you? I mean, no, we can see it on the camera. Yeah. Can we just ask questions now? So, does some of you mean us harm? Turn me down, I want to feel oh, cool. Does some of you mean us harm? Yes. 
sounds like a heartbeat. It's a heartbeat. Than... Okay. Um, is was there a woman that was trapped down here? It's like it's coming from over there. It sounds like it's coming from oh, where, in front of you, Stu. Does it? Yeah. That's from where you're standing. Do, do any of you need help? That's incredible. Yes, constant. I know. Can you just please, two for yes, one for no. Do any of you need our help? I'll ask again, was there a woman trapped down here? Was she put in here against her will? Just, just talk. Can you talk to us using the uh, letters? Do you want to give us a message? What, that was no. the loudest one, yeah. No. Will you do something else for us then? Will you move objects? Will you throw something in the room for us? Or show yourself to us? Can we hear your voice? Can you copy me? Hello? Use your voice. Hello? Or try? person called McGee connected with this place? Whoa. Oh. I couldn't even pinpoint where that came from, it was that loud. From, well, from where I'm standing, to me, it sounded like it was coming from my left. So behind where Darren is? Correct. I, I couldn't tell. I, it, it sounded, it's one of those noises that could have come from anywhere. I mean, I've, I've, my feet are rooted to the spot. And I've got use, I've got use. Obviously not moving yeah. at all. Was McGee the person who was put down here? Was McGee a woman? What's the connection? They don't want to say. It's almost like somebody... It's, I think it's somebody seems to want to say something, which is the loud enough, and then somebody... I don't know, is, is they pulling them back? Because, like, there's a secret. I'm not, you know... I know I'm digging here, but it's like there's a secret. Somebody's going, no, you can't say any more. Because like you said, McGee, bang, bang, then nothing. But McGee, I would say, is a Scottish name, isn't it? Not a Welsh name. Can you make another noise? Now, I heard a bit of furniture. I've, I've just there. panned over to yeah. there now, Eva, yeah. and I'm actually pointing to the furniture which is stacked up. Can you, can you move the furniture? Can you move the furniture? Can you just try and push some... I mean, use all of our energy and try and push it off if you can. There are nine of you in here. Yeah. Tap, tap, tap. I did just move my weight. Try again. Did that again. I was over here. No, it was definitely mm -hmm. tap, tap, tap. It seems strange it happened at the same time. Yeah. There's nothing else, though, is there? I mean, the, the taps are amazing. I always love the taps, and it's great when they can confirm something. I'd like to look into the history and see if there's a McGee. I know. The trouble is, at one point, I, was, I could have sworn it was coming from this. No, that's a that's different, different noise, different isn't sound. it? No, that's different as well. It doesn't feel heavy in here, though, does it? Yeah, but the whole, the whole thing about Ruthin, I think, it, it's, it's the spirits here, that it's very haunted, but I don't, it's not nasty. No. It's a... I think that... Well, it's, it's incredibly haunted, but I think they're all very comfortable. They just want to communicate. Some do, some don't. Yeah. But wood is good. Remember that, folks. Well, that's why all the, you know, when you just do the best spirit cabinets in the in Victorian period were, were, were the ones that were wood slatted. You used to get more activity there than. Yeah. What do you mean by oh. that, Carl? Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. 
Fucking jeez. Who's that? Who was it? So I was Greg. I just heard it was Greg. Oh. You're talking about the slats, Carl. What do you yeah, mean by it's that? The things, it's, 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 if you think the old um, uh, seance parlours, they used to be panelled and, uh, and, yeah. and it's all about that soft furnishings and wood. It absorbs energy. Mm. And I think when they used to do these um, sort of travelling things, they used to have wood slats so they could fold them out. And make almost a smaller version of it, mm. and because wood, it absorb it absorbs the energy, and holds it, and can throw it back. That's the idea. Well, yeah, and it's worked with us, isn't it? We've mm. we've been in places what, that have been just stone and kind of, and and you get some stuff, but not a lot. But you go into a wooden room with, oh, with wow, the panels yeah. and the, yeah. especially if you've got panel ceiling and all yeah. that. It, like, well, you've been as well, Stu. Mm. Well, we've yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've heard this sort of, and you can't pinpoint where they're coming, where the knocks are coming from. Quiet though, and it doesn't feel heavy. Like they're saying, it's nothing negative down here. But the last time we came down here, it did feel heavy. It could all change later on. Now we've been down once, we've kind of charged things up a bit. Mm -hmm. Come on. Then. A gentleman walks down in front of a woman, a lady going downstairs, and behind a lady going up. I'll keep recording now. Yeah. Me too. After our initial investigation, we decided to split up. I sent Darren and Greg to room 222, Stuart to the Lily Langtree suite, Carl to room 207, whilst Glenn and I went to the kitchen and banqueting area. Okay, right. so this part of the building is somewhere new for us, isn't it? It is, it's uh, the back of the banqueting hall, the medieval banqueting hall, uh, in the oldest part of this part of the castle. Um, used to be a laboratory, uh, I understand. Yeah, so from 1920 to 1960, is that correct? Something like that. Something like that. Um, the f oh. <laughs> God, I've just had a baby. Wow, it's yeah. about the timing. So, so this basically was, like Glenn said, the laboratory, um, and they treated um, uh, infectious disease, uh, not infectious, internal diseases here. Um, they don't really know where the morgue was, but this was the laboratory, which is now the kitchen area. Um, so we're going to set up some... Um, Just trying to find some power. Some power. There you go. Got some? I'm going to turn the light off. And the switch. Light's going off. Okay. There we go. Right. Okay. So, so the computer to call in now for EVP purposes. There we go. I can see. Oh, God, I just banged into a wall. Tap started dripping, which I didn't notice when we first came in. It's, it's like it's only, only just started dripping. Okay. Again, it could be coincidental. I would imagine so. Mm -hmm. Right. So, EVP running? Yeah. Okay. How are you feeling? I feel okay in here. Mind you, in my experience with kitchens, um, whenever I've investigated them, most nine times out of ten, uh, objects have started flying around, glasses smashing, but I've noticed there's actually nothing in here. No. To actually do that. But how good would that be if something came flying at us when we know full well there's nothing in yes, here? Yes, exactly. To do that. that would be good. It's very quiet. You can hear the machines in the background humming on and off the dripping of the tap, and next door is the banqueting hall, which we'll go and have a look uh, to uh, look in in a minute. But I'll just do a little bit of a call out, yeah? Yeah, please. Okay, I'm just going to uh, just okay. set this here. Put it up a little bit higher, actually. Uh, I'll hold it on here. Yeah, actually, my arm is killing me. Sorry. <laughs> so, does anybody here? Um, please, can you make a sound? Can you make a noise? We know this used to be the laboratory. Right, come on. Stu's gone right the way up there to the Lily Langtree suite. There he is, bless him. Um, and I don't think Stu actually knows who Lily Langtree is. <laughs> 
um, but it's supposed to be the most haunted place, a uh, haunted bedroom, and I'm going into 207. And the one thing about Ruthin, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, is that it is very haunted, but it's haunted by nice spirits. So there's nothing malevolent here, nothing nasty. I think it's just whatever is going around its daily routine, doing the same thing. Hello? Is anyone here? I really kind of desperately need to show this. I can't see too much. I'm with you guys. That's the bathroom suite. Um, and now there's a step there. And that's... Oh. Yeah, so that's the full doodah of the uh, circle of the place. If you're here, and I know you are, we're not here to harm you or ridicule you. We've all of us have travelled a long way. And we just want to speak to you, to communicate with you, to learn from you. Carl is in... 207, I think it, I think it's in 207, and I'm going in, I'm going in the Lily Suite, and that's 204, so I'll just give you a quick pan of the corridor, that's the door I've just come through, and that's up. As I'm standing here now, we can hear the wind rattling on that piece of plastic there at the end, okay? I've just heard a room, I've just heard a noise come from here now, and I've literally just come up here. This is it, I've not even been in the room yet. Hello? Sure, I just heard something in here. I'm positive. Just close that. That light you see in there is the. Oh, the curtains are open, and that's my infrared. You can see. Right. So this is the bit. Where there's uh, there's a couple of bedrooms, aren't there? Because I, I had a look around this before. And they're like, well, there's a couple of bedrooms that they don't use. Uh, is that one of them? You all right? Yeah, good. Right behind you. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to torch this way because I can't see a thing. No, it's fine. It's absolutely pitch black. Right. What room are we in? Right, this is two two two. Okay. So we've had. When we've been here before, we've had plenty of activity, but we've also had activity upstairs. So there's a door here, yeah. which leads to an upstairs area, which is a little bit derelict. I've, I've been in this bit before when I've done a most haunted experience. Yeah. Until next time, sleep tight. <laughs>